Okay, now the graphical representation of vector quantities, okay? So magnitudes and direction of vector quantities can be represented by a vector diagram. Now we use an arrow, all right, to represent a single direction vector, okay? We use an arrow, all right? Simple, if the, if the vector isn't going up, all right? If the vector is going up, all right, in that direction, if the vector is going sideways in this direction, or if it's going down that direction, the arrowhead indicates the direction. Okay, now something to pay attention to for rough vector sketches, the length of the arrow shows the magnitude of the vector. All right, so maybe we can say that the magnitude of this vector, if it were a uh, displacement, would be five meters. This one would be a little bit longer, so seven meters. And this one also roughly about five, we can make that about like six meters, uh, etc. Okay, basically, you get the point. All right. Now, as I mentioned, the rough sketches, the diagrams are not drawn to scale, and the arrow length indicates the relative magnitudes of the vectors. In our example above, the arrowheads indicate the approximate direction. So this, they are taking into consideration force. So the force is going one newton to the west and three newtons east. Notice the difference in the arrow lengths. Okay, they are approximate, so they are not calculated to scale at any point in time. Okay, they are approximate completely up to the person drawing them. So if I think or I feel that that is a three newton vector uh, representation or depiction, I will go ahead and I will state that that is my interpretation or depiction of a three newton vector. All right, moving on swiftly. Now we're moving on to scaled vectors. Now, when we get to scaled vectors, okay, this is when our diagrams are a little bit more accurate. And we use a general scale in physics, all right? We'll normally use the scale 10 newtons is 1 centimeter, or 1 centimeter is 10 newtons. Now, this is a little bit longer than 3 centimeters, okay? This looks roughly about, if that's a centimeter, or no, that's a centimeter roughly, if that's another centimeter, if that's another centimeter, if that's another centimeter, that looks like one, two, three, four. That looks more like uh, five centimeters. All right? That looks more like a five centimeter. Okay, vector. So then, in turn, if this was scaled, that would be five newtons. All right. That was, that's if it was a scaled vector. Okay, perfect. All right, so uh, the example 60 newtons would be six centimeters long, and these would need to be indicated either uh, using a compass or protractor if necessary. So why do we need a protractor? Uh, we might have to use bearing, okay, bearing when we are calculating. All right, calculating uh, a di certain direction because uh, if, for example, I end up over here, all right, and I end up going in that direction, and then I end up going coming back to that direction, and then I go back to that direction, I need to calculate my bearing because I have angles here. All right, but this will be explained in a further video when I have a look at the questions. All right, for now, we're just going through the content. Okay, but direction would need to be indicated if necessary. All right. Properties of vectors, we're looking at what happens if, our ve if we have two vectors and they are equal. So if our vectors are of equal magnitudes and directions, they are parallel to each other, therefore they are equal. In the example, all right, on your slide, 50 Newton is F1 and F2 is also 50 Newtons, therefore the forces are equal and they are the same. Now, what happens 
if we get negative forces. Now the signs of vectors acting along a straight line in exactly opposite directions differ. Okay, so for example, if F1 is going 3 newtons east and F2 is going 5 newtons west, we can indicate the directions as either positive or negative. Okay, so let's let's draw that. So in the in the text, okay, we got let's just draw our little point. We got going three newtons to the right or east. All right, and this is five newtons to the west. Now what happens is we can indicate we need to pick a direction. All right, we need to pick a direction. So first things first. First things first, number one is we need to therefore pick a direction. All right, now in most cases and in most questions, they'd like you to pick east as positive. So I go with that as well. So I'll take east as my positive. And therefore, the opposite direction, west, will be negative. Okay, so in the example, all right, it was plus 3 newtons, all right, plus 3 newtons east, and negative 5 newtons to the west. Okay, purely the signs just indicate the direction of the vector. Purely. Okay, we cannot get a negative force, so it's not that the force itself is negative, but we are indicating the direction of the vectors only when we put our signs in front of the values. Right, addition of vectors. If vectors act upon the same object at the same moment, it is sometimes useful to determine the combined or net effect of the vectors. What's important to please remember, folks, a scalar cannot be added to the vector. Only vectors of the same type can be added. So when adding vectors, we must also consider their directions. We cannot just go ahead and add them like scalars. All right, hope everyone has that down, okay? So, for example, if F1 and F F2 and F3 are our forces, F1, 2 newtons east, F2, 3 newtons east, and F3, 4 newtons east. Okay, so we can see all of our vectors are going in the same direction. Hence, we can add them just like it says. Only vectors of the same type can be added. So, what we did here, all right, and I don't need to use the pen for this because all the working out is on the slide. All right, we write our formula, we begin with either, uh, but before we do that, we have to pick our direction. So there are all three of them are going east. So it's easy. All we need to do is pick a direction, and I picked in the example, and I encourage you to do this as well, we take east as our positive. So they're all going east, we all have positive vectors, we can add them without any hassle. So we begin, by saying F net or F resultant. F res stands for the resultant forces. Equals to F1 plus F2 plus F3. We add them respectively, 2 plus 3 plus 4, and we get a final answer of 9 newtons east. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please, our direction and our unit of measurement is imperative when answering these questions. If those two are not filled in, no matter if you got the addition of the values correct, your answers will be marked wrong by your teacher or your marker. All right, so F results in once again, nine newtons east as our final answer. Now, when it comes to a multiplication of vectors, this is a very short section. All right, a vector cannot be added to a scalar, but it can be multiplied with the scalar. Okay, this will change the value of the vector, but direction will change the same. 
okay? If you have a force, all right, and then you have a five times greater force, all that happens is your original force became five times greater, but still going in the same direction, all right? So you can multiply it by the value of five, which gives you 5F as depicted on your screens.